The government has made two other decisions in the wake of the Christchurch massacre. Now, first was to ban libertarian provocateur Milo Yiannopoulos from coming to speak here. And second was today to ban a deal with Pauline Hanson's One Nation to swap preferences at the election. Well, there'll be no preference deals with One Nation. Short and sharp. Joining me is the panel, Lib Labor Senator Kimberly Kitching and Liberal Senator James Patterson. No deal with Pauline Hanson. Why suddenly now? No deal. Well, I'm entirely comfortable with this, Andrew, because let's look at the scorecard. At the last election, One Nation elected four senators. And other than Pauline Hanson, none of those senators are still standing today. She lost one to citizenship, she lost one to bankruptcy, she lost one to personality fights, and then she lost Fraser Ranning on his first day as a One Nation senator. You think three so, out of... Well, that would happen to so, be a benefit. And, and for, your, for your viewers at home, Andrew, some of whom might like Pauline Hanson and might contemplate voting for One Nation at this election because of that, they should remember she's not on the ballot at this election, but her ability to, to vet her candidates is on the ballot and you have to be a pretty that, brave betting man to back that. That is a fair point given the record. But, Kimberly, the problem for Scott Morrison is that the Liberals actually do need preference swaps with One Nation, particularly in Queensland. And I think the Prime Minister was very careful and possibly cunning with his words. He said we won't do any deals. He didn't say where they would put mm. them on the, ba on, the, on the preference order. Not like John Howard did. So that's right. Ex that is exa I was going to mention John Howard's Sorry. name, <laughs> but that is exactly Don't right. Don't mention it. Um, and so he made that very clear. Mm. Do we know where, you know, will the ALP be above Fraser Anning, for example? We don't know. Will they be above One Nation? Fraser Anning is will not the One Nation. But on will they be above, ticket. will the ALP be above One Nation? And the Prime Minister didn't say that. He just said we won't do any deals. That's exactly the wording he used before the Queensland state election. But that's, a, that's the whole thing. And the, th the other thing too is, you know, I'm uncomfortable with some of this, um, this punitive stuff because all those politicians, you can disagree with their message, absolutely, but they do represent voters. And where I think a line has been crossed and the Greens wanting to suspend Fraser Anning, repulsive though some of his views clearly are, they want to suspend him at the next meeting of Parliament so he can't sit out the rest of the term. But that means disenfranchising everyone that voted for him. Well, Andrew, I think it's very important to say up front, I'll be very proud to be voting for a motion with Kimberley and I hope every other senator to censure Fraser Anning, as he should be, for yes. appalling comments that he made. Having said that, I don't think parliamentarians should be able to get together and vote out other duly elected parliamentarians, no matter how offensive they are. It's happened once in our history. It was a Republican in 1920, a Labor opposition MP, who was expelled for Republican sentiments. Now, that is clearly anti-democratic in whatever era it occurred. Um, ultimately, it must be the Australian people who do that, and they'll have an opportunity very soon to do that. With I think it's an important principle I, here. I do too, and in fact, um, the Australian ran an article today, and I gave a comment for it, saying that you, we don't want a system where the majority could use its majority with bad faith and vote out someone you know, from a minority, from the smaller party. And I think that's dangerous ground. Uh, on the suspension issue, I think that, you know, that while people are wanting to do that, the best thing that people can do is think very carefully about how they vote. Mm. I think that's oh, the yeah. most, yeah. most important... But you, you raise a really interesting point there. On the fir first one, that, what you're describing is majority tyranny, which is uh, what people like uh, Tocqueville, I think, uh, used to uh, warn about. But um, I worry that by... He's being made a whipping boy and a scapegoat, right? His, his comments, Fraser and were clearly, you know, repulsive, repulsive. But the focus on him now, what I'm scared of is that we are going to see a bigger vote from him than the 19 he got last time. And that, yeah. I think we've got to be really careful about well, that. I share your concern completely about that, Andrew, and there's a real dilemma for us as major political parties. Do we give him the attention that he so clearly wants or do we say nothing about him at all? And in the end, I fall down on the side of we have to make it crystal clear that we don't share his views, we don't endorse his views, in fact, we condemn them. Because, frankly, there's a lot of people out there in Australia... Muslim Australians in particular, who are patriotic Australians, who love their country, who are law-abiding, who work hard, who are feeling this week incredibly hurt by the things he said. Mm. And we've got a duty to them to make sure that they know that no one else shares his views, that they're his views alone. Yeah. And I think, can I just add, I, Andrew, I think, so I totally agree with what James is saying. And I think that, um, you know, I've spent some time on the weekend with newly arrived, Syri some members of the newly arrived Syrian community. So these are people who are in the main 
traumatised by a war in their own country. They were on the special humanitarian visa program. They're out in the north of Melbourne. They're, they feel very concerned about how they're viewed in society in general. Should, and we don't want to start, you know, people to feel that they can't go out into our broader community. So... Like I feel that I can't with these uh, lynch and, mobs. And, well, I think that, I mean, there's a view around, you know, mosques having security mm -hmm. and obviously Jewish. shuls do as well, you know, mm -hmm. synagogues do as well. And coming back to Fraser Anning, I thought in his speech when he used the word final solution, I don't know whether, um, I mean, to use that phrase with all of the weight of that is, I don't know, I mean, that was abhorrent. Look, at the time, I thought when you read the, that phrase in context, that it was a mistake, you know, just a mistake. Mm. I'm not 100% sure of that position now, but can I, can I ask you, um, you know, with Fraser Anning, if there is a significant vote, what does it say? Well, he'd have to get a lot of votes to get re-elected, Andrew. I seriously doubt no matter no, I don't how think, many I'm votes he gets. Get well, but it's, it's worth dwelling on briefly. I mean, no matter how many votes he gets, I think it's seriously unlikely that he'll be re-elected. And so whatever happens at this election, the parliament will be a better one for him not being in it. Um, I think there will be some people who pro who vote for him as a bit of a protest, sadly, as a bit of an up yours to the major parties. It won't necessarily be an endorsement of all of his views, of all of his behaviour, but in an era where there is a bit of scepticism and distrust with major political parties, I think sometimes there it. might be a bit of protest. And, and the ganging up factor... Well, because we saw that with Pauline Hanson. As soon as the majors start to try to exclude someone else and demonise them, people will unfortunate... Well, not necessarily unfortunate. They will stick up for them, but it's an unfortunate vehicle in this case. But that's what will happen. I don't know. Listen, is there something in the mood in Australia that is disturbing you? In Maybe I'm just seeing it from a, 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 you know, my particular perspective. But in New Zealand, I'm seeing people coming together... In Australia, I'm seeing people using this massacre to sh scream, shout, intimidate, exclude, vent. It seems a very different process. I think, well, I think that we are also, I mean, if we're talking about political leadership, I think that we've had um, some people in Conservative parties who have played footsie with the politics of fear and hate. And I think, but the best that's of the... That's being the exaggerated. Best, that's yes, being exaggerated because the, it includes people being scared of Islamist terrorism, which surely is a legitimate concern. And I think that uh, jihadists and uh, anyone of such fundamental beliefs that they are willing to go out mm. and kill people at a place of worship, uh, they are, you know, they are all in the same... They're all peas <laughs> in a pod. I've got only 30 seconds left. Can you, can Andrew, I'm utterly depressed at how quickly it has taken in Australia to go to partisanship over this issue. And yes. frankly, it hasn't largely been the major parties. It's been the extreme parties, the Greens in one sense and Fraser Running in one nation and the others, who have quickly tried to seek political advantage over a shocking tragedy, a shocking terrorist incident. Um, well, that's a really depressing thing about our politics and we have to find a way to get past that. I think you make a point there because it really is on both extremes, Greens and, and, and Fra the Fraser Rannings and not so much Labor and Liberal, thank goodness for that. James Patterson, Kimberly Kitching, thank you both so much for your thank time. You. More after the break, including I will correct a smear, a sliming of Sky News.